around literature review and survey. And I'll try as much as possible to make it um, interactive so that everybody can participate. Um, so my name is Popular. I'm from Edinburgh University and um, I'm part of Enlighten and I lead two here South there. So um, for a very good experience, if you're not speaking, I'm sure we know all of this. Um, you can turn your mic off, turn the camera off if the quality is not so good. If you want to comment as I speak, um, you can use your raise hand icon or you can you know, um, put asterisk in the chat box. And I just want people to engage as much as possible as we go along. So um, to get started, so the first question I've got is, why do we do literature review? Why is literature review so important? Why? What is the benefit? So for that, I want all the ASRs to take about, you know, few seconds to think about that question, that why do we do literature review? And for me to know about your thoughts, I want to share your thoughts with everybody, and I will tell you how to do that. So if you look at the, um, the chat screen, um, I'm struggling with this a little bit. I hope I get it right because I'm using multiple screens, so that's why. Um, so if I stop sharing, so I want to share a different screen, and I want you to enter what you think on um, the website that you see. So if you look at this, can you see my screen now? Yes. So if you go to this website, menti.com, and use this code, and type a few words why you think literature review is so important. I just want to see what we think. You can do that on your computer or on your phone. Just why do you think literature review is so important? Few short words. To gain knowledge, that's very good. Fundamental understanding, what competitors are doing, very good, very good points. We just wait for a couple more to have general idea about the topic. One more. Yeah, exactly. Catch up with the state of the art. Excellent. So you don't repeat what's already been done. These are all excellent um, ideas. And thank you so much for participating. So if I continue with my new presentation, so I continue so that we see what I have got, whether we all agree. So what I've got is that if you want to do literature review, yeah, let me just get this started. Sorry, okay, very good. So as you rightly said, we do literature review to understand the state of the art. To get started with a concept, which is one of the points um, we raised as well. And at times you do literature review to validate your own understanding. You want to learn the basics. You want to understand what is already out there. So you don't repeat what others have done. You don't want to reinvent the wheel, so to speak. And then you want to find a research problem at times. You want to find a direction where to go. You are looking for what is yet to be discovered. So at times you do that to do literature review. And at times you've done some work. You want to see how good is your work compared to your competitors. So you want to benchmark what you've done and benchmark your results. That is another good reason why we do literature review. And at times you just want to know who are the other groups that are active in that research area. Possibly they could be your collaborators in future. They might be your competitors, but might also be your collaborators, people that you can work with on the problem. And these people might also be the future reviewers of your work. If you write a paper and a particular group is active in the same space, it's very likely that they will be the ones that will be reviewing your paper or your grant applications in future. So it's very important to know who is active in that domain space. So that is, these are some of the reasons why we do. Um, literature review, okay? So the next question is, now we know why it's important. Where do we search for literature review? How do we go about it? Where do you look for literature? Uh, I just want to open that to, uh, you know, to the ASLs. I put search engines there, an example is Google Scholar. So if you want to tell me 
because we've all started literature review. Where do you search for literature review? And I just want people to raise their hands and comment. So it's open. Where do you search for literature review? Anyone? Yes, uh, 1.1. Where do you search for literature review? Um, you already mentioned that I can see it in your screens. Google Scholar, IEEE Explorer, and the mm -hmm. university libraries are the ones that I was using to do and that I'm using currently to do literature reviews. 1.2, yes, uh, 1.2. Yeah, um, morning. Um, Google Scholar as well as uh, Scopus and uh, also ResearchGate. Uh, yeah. Yes, at 1.3, something new that is not on the list that has not been mentioned. Yes, at 1.3. Yes, at 1.4. Uh, mostly uh, from the same search engine, but I usually take like if I see a paper from someone and then I look at the citations or who cites them and then start there. Okay, um, 1.5. Uh, for me, it is also the same. I triple and Google Scholar are most common too. Okay, 2.1. 2.2. Two point three. Yeah, all the ones uh, we cited, plus um, survey survey uh, papers maybe who contain other reference. And two point four. Um, I have the same answer for James. Like the ACM Digital Library is also really useful for me sometimes. Very good. And two point five. Uh, for me, I triple E Google Scholar and ResearchGate. And three point one. IEEE and ACM Digital Libraries are the main. 3.2. Uh, for me, this time, uh, IEEE and Google Scholar. Right, and 3.4. I think whatever they have mentioned, I think they are also correct. And um, one a place you can find very current and uh, new things people are doing, they have the preprint, they put it on archive. Yes. Also check archive for some information that people are working on currently. Very good. And three point five. Last but not least. I also use IEEE, but uh, it, uh, during the MS, the work that I was doing was more related to uh, magnetic resonance. So they they had their own journal website MRM, which I used to uh, use. Fantastic. So very good. So I'm pleased to hear that you all know where to search for information. That's why I've been asking. And you can see from my list, it contains most of the things that you've all talked about. We have, you know, search engines, we have databases. Some of them are electronic and some of them are the old style, you know, uh, paper copy. Um, you can get that in the libraries. All of these are valuable places to search for literature. Okay. So we know where to look for literature. That's very good. And the next question is, how do you determine what to search for? You know the digital library, you've been to the library, you have the um, search engine, then what do you look for? So what I've put down is, if you look at your research project description, that will give you an indication of what exactly you are looking for. Every ESR has got a project brief. You've got a challenge, you've got the task, you've got the ambition, you've got the objective that you want to achieve. Those information can help you to get started in terms of what am I looking for when I'm searching for literature. You might also search in the field that you are working on. For most of the ESRs, we're all working on visible light communication with different challenges. The challenge and the field combined together, you can use that to search for information that you are using. And somebody mentioned that from consulted literature, it's possible that your supervisor or somebody will give you a paper or you find a paper yourself that is very vital, that is very good. You read that paper and inside the paper, there will be other references mentioned. Those other references will be potential new materials for you to read. And then you find them, you find other literature inside and so on and so on. So it, it starts to cascade and then you start to build um, your own uh, you know, literature portfolio, uh, portfolio that you've researched. So these are, um, sources of information that you can use to begin your search. Also, your supervisor, your colleagues or co-workers might also suggest, you know, very good materials for you to start looking into for you. 
And then at times you want to look at renowned groups. We said at the beginning, you want to see what other people are doing. Who are those people that are very active? So you can look, you can search by their names to find out what their latest results are, to find out what their latest works are. Or you go into their web page or to their website and see what their latest publications are. That can also be um, a valuable way of finding the latest results in your field of study. Now we've done that. So the next question I've got is, do you actually trust the information you get from your literature review? How do you decide if what you see in those papers is true, is questionable, or is basically false? That's a question of trust. How do you decide? Anybody? You found a paper, you've read it. How do you make a judgment? Is this correct? Is it false? Should I trust it? What do you do? If I may say here, yeah, uh, this is still a home. Um, uh, so maybe if the paper is really good, uh, it will have lots of citations and another community will also use it. So that's one thing to consider whether it is really available or not. Okay. So a paper was published in March 2020, and this is uh, July. It's got very little citation. It looks interesting. The results are amazing. How do you know whether to trust it or not? Yeah, um, yeah, there, my my point will not work there. So maybe the the, the journal, uh, the impact of the journal. Okay. Also Anyone else? Yeah. Suppose maybe uh, yeah yeah yeah. Sir, one point um, Suppose there's maybe also cross referencing that can be done and cross check if uh, if the research that is done in this paper corresponds to corresponds well to the general direction that the field is developing so it doesn't have a result maybe that is sticking too much out of what has mm -hmm. been developing but is but you can see a pro natural natural progression from what's very going good. on very good anyone else we take one more hi Gianluca Martena here ESR 2.2 I would see if that paper uh, has been submitted and accepted for uh, a well-known conference maybe mm -hmm. okay very good. Is anybody itching to say something before we continue? Uh, yeah. Right? Okay. Uh, this is Talia. Um, I would, or at least I try to, if possible, to at least reproduce part of the results that are most relevant to my work. Very good. Okay. And final call. Anyone else that really, really wants to say something? Yeah. Yeah. This is Daniel. Uh, can we can we always trust um, papers that comes from leading researchers? From Leading researchers from a particular field. Little researchers. Leading, leading. Oh, I mean, leading. Not a researcher. Yeah. Leading. Yeah. Well, it's the same question. Can you trust them? <laughs> That's think, the question. How do you make that judgment? Yeah, mostly. I think when um, lead, leading researchers publish papers, we we tend to trust and believe that because they are leaders in the field, mostly mm -hmm. their thoughts are very uh, powerful, and we tend to trust them. Okay. That's interesting. Very good. So let's see what points I've got down. I said, the first one, is it peer reviewed? Do we, do we all know what it means for a piece of work to be peer reviewed to start with? Do we understand what that means? So to be peer reviewed means that that work has gone through a kind of um, vetting by people that work in that area, by experts that work in that same field. They've done the quality control. They've checked the results over, they've read the paper, they've asked questions, they've raised concerns, and they've given the authors opportunity to respond you know, to, their, uh, to, their, to their query or to their concern or to their comments. For instance, some of you must have submitted to the Mobicom conference, and as part of that process, you get some feedback. That is a peer review process. In some instances, particularly for some um, journals, that process might take up to a year and you might have a, a number of iterations of that process. They give you some feedback, you go back, you respond, you submit, you get another feedback, you submit, and so on and so on, until everybody's happy. That is a quality control mechanism that most journals and conferences have. So you want to ask yourself, is this piece of work peer reviewed? You understand? So that is number one. It could be a journal, it could be a conference paper, it could be a white paper, it could be a textbook. Typically, textbooks don't go through the same process as journals. They are reviewed, but not in the same, uh, not at the same level of rigor. 
because what goes in third book is coming from journals and conferences that have been peer reviewed. You understand? So therefore, the review process for third book is usually not as rigorous as journals because it's both reports, what is already, uh, if you like, common knowledge. Um, so that is very vital. Then you want to look at the publisher. Who is publishing this paper? Who is publishing this book? Who are the publishers of these conferences? Who are the organizers? So typically, you look at reputable professional bodies. Uh, you know, it depends on your field. It could be ACM, it could be IEEE, it could be IET, it could be OSA, and so on and so forth. It could be, you know, well-known publisher like Wiley, Elsevier, and so on. So you want to use that to make a judgment whether this information is to be trusted or not. You want to check out the author. Somebody mentioned that are they established. Yes, that could be a factor. What is the author's pedigree? Which research group are they coming from? Are they known in the field? Are they known to be active in that area? That could also be a factor to consider, whether to trust a particular research or to treat that result with a bit of um, skepticism. Also, you want to check out related studies. Somebody mentioned earlier, you want to see the general direction. Is this a completely groundbreaking result that you know, is on its own, nothing else relates to it? Okay, so you want to check what direction it is. Can you reproduce the result? Well, you have to be careful here. You can only do that if it is possible. You have all the necessary tools, the software, the materials, the lab space, the experience, and the expertise. And you only do that if it is worthwhile. If it is going to aid your own research, yes, you might try to reproduce it, but not if you shouldn't try to reproduce every result. It might not just be worthwhile. So one thing to do if you're unsure is to discuss with your supervisor whether it is worthwhile to reproduce or not, if you are in doubt. And then there's a big question here. Can I use Wikipedia? My take is yes, but you have to be very careful. When you use Wikipedia, typically they give you their own references. So try and locate the primary source of information that is provided in Wikipedia. So you might use Wikipedia to get a quick flavor of what something means, but deep down into their own references if you really um, want to do more on that one. So yes, you can, but with a bit of caution. And the next question is, what happens if this paper we are talking about is so profound and groundbreaking? It does not relate to anything and nothing compares with it. What do you do? Do you trust it? Or do you just say, it doesn't matter, I go on? You understand? That is something to think about. That is something to ponder. If you think back, I don't know, 50, 60 years ago, when Einstein came back with, came up with special relativity, it was completely out of the blue. And people, you know, were like, should we trust this? Should we believe it or not? If you were to be in that era, what would you do? You understand? So a general rule of thumb is that if you are unsure, you reserve your judgment until some other will come to either prove it that it is true or come to disprove it that it is not true. So, but until that time, you have to reserve your judgment because you don't have any evidence to either disprove it or approve it, okay? So that would be my suggestion in that scenario. And when you've done your literature search, you've read, you've taken note of everything, then what do you do with the material that you've generated? Definitely, you have to keep them. You have to keep a log because at the end of your study, you need to write a thesis. A big part of your thesis is literature review. Therefore, all these papers, all these conference papers that you've read, you still have to summarize them as part of your thesis. Therefore, it makes sense to keep them. After about a couple of weeks or three weeks, you start to forget where you found a particular information. So it makes absolute sense for you to have your own mechanism of recording what you found. It has to be whatever works for you best. You might go for the old pen and paper, record, you keep log in a you know, nice logbook of the papers you've used. Um, you might summarize the paper and you know, point out the key facts there, the key things that are important for you. You might make notes as a paper, or you might want to use electronic record, or you might have a filing cabinet in your office or at home where you keep it. Whatever works for you, make sure you do keep a copy of the papers um, that you've consulted in your study. And so the question is, how do you do your own literature review? How do you record your own literature review? Um, I don't expect an answer to that. I just want to point out that you need to think about, you know, keeping a record. If you don't do that already, it is essential. It is absolutely crucial for you to do that. You have to, you know, keep a record. 
of your literature review. I don't know if there are any questions. I have one minute for questions before I continue, you know, at this point. Do you have any other means of keeping a record apart from uh, those ones um, listed? Anyone with comment questions? Okay, very good. If there are no questions at this point, so please um, take note, you have to keep a record. So the next thing I want to talk about here is using literature in your work. That is, I'm talking about referencing and citation. I cannot stress this point enough. Um, you have to avoid intellectual theft, which is called plagiarism. It is actually a big academic crime. It's akin to having your own money stolen from you, your bank account. So in academic world, that is how big an issue it is. So the question I've got for you is, what constitutes plagiarism? If, when I say somebody has plagiarized, what does that mean to you? In your mind, what do you think that means? Anybody? I think uh, it's Sermad here. Uh, okay. I think it is using someone other's work without uh, referencing it or without uh, giving due credit to them. Okay, very good. Anyone else? So I found, I'm reading a paper, I'm painting a scenario here. I'm reading a paper. It's fine, it's nice paper. I've seen a figure, a block diagram, and then I copied that block diagram, but modified it a little bit and changed some of the text and then put it in my own work. Is that plagiarism? I think yes. Why? Well, because uh, you are not actually using your own mind to produce something new. Exactly. Exactly. So think about it. You might find somebody's work and you say, okay, they've made a claim, they found something, and then you try to paraphrase it. You use your own words to describe what they've done. Yes, you are allowed to do that, but you, are, you still have to reference because the general idea, that information is not yours, even though you put it in your own words. But that general information, that idea is coming from someone else. So you still have to reference the work. So you give credit to people that have done something, right, that you are using in your own work. So please do all you can to avoid plagiarism. If you are not sure, check with your supervisor. They'll be able to guide you. You understand? So please and please, it's very easy to make these mistakes if you are, uh, you know, when you're writing a paper or something, you're writing something about the uh, introduction, the general area, you take something from papers you've read and you think it's a common knowledge, but please try as much as possible to avoid plagiarism. So as I've said, always um, acknowledge any literature you use in your work. How do you do that? You use referencing. The best idea is to use some referencing tools. Do not try to do it manually. As you progress with your study, the amount of references you've seen, you've consulted, starts to grow. So doing it manually is just going to be a waste of time. Please don't. Use tools that are meant for that. You can use EndNote. You can use the one in MS Word. You can use Little Bibliography and so on and so forth. Please, if you don't know how to use these tools, it is not too late to start to learn. You will benefit from that uh, as you go along. So please do that. So plagiarism, I cannot stress enough. Make sure you don't fall foul of plagiarism. There are people whose careers have been completely ruined because of plagiarism. Because when you publish a paper, you want that paper to stay. You don't want somebody um, making allegations that you've copied their work. Um, so please uh, pay attention to that. So that, those will be the key points that I want to mention about literature review. It is something that we do all of the time. Literature review does not just stop once you start producing your own results. You do it from the beginning till the end of your career, basically. You have to keep reading and finding out information. So to summarize, I've got um, this um, little chart there, and it's coming from the Edinburgh University on top tips for literature review. And this is everything I've talked about is nicely summarized in this little chart there, that you, know, you find information, you keep information, you keep a note of it, and you use a referencing tool you know, to make sure you reference the work you've done uh, uh, when writing your own um, article. So that will be the end of my talk this morning. And I'm open to questions. We've got about a minute or two for questions. Thank you.